gustul dragă trăguță Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea matale Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale Hello, Rabbi Asa. Hello. How do you do? How, do, how are you? Okay. I'm David Liviano with uh, Rabbi Haim Asa in Fullerton, Orange County, California. Beautiful day. Today is Tuesday afternoon, May 28, 2013. And Rabbi Asa is going to talk to us about a righteous Gentile from Poland. This is story 19. Rabbi. Thank you, David. The story of Irene Gutov Dark is an incredible story which I documented. I wrote it up and I sent it to Yad Vashem, which is the uh, Holocaust Authority in Jerusalem, which is the only uh, authority that grants the title of righteous Gentile to non-Jews who save Jews at their own, at the risk of their own life. Well, I tried to find survivors of that particular event. Event. The, the 13 and, people. And, and, and one family was in Brazil and beyond reach. One family... We're talking about the four families that uh, Irene hid in the house of a, a civil engineer that was a German and had to yeah. be a Nazi and uh, basically she hid them in his basement and then he found out and she became a mistress to him in order to be able to continue this but they survived for all, more than a year until the war finished and the Nazi retreated so this is the continuation yeah. of story 18 so one family was in Brazil beyond rich couldn't find them Today would have been easy with uh, Facebook, social Facebook media, electronics. Google, yeah, but this is uh, 30... Yeah, 1976. Yeah, 30... almost 40 years ago. Almost 40 years ago. Yeah, and one family was in Munich, Germany. One family was in Israel, and one family was in the United States of America on the East Coast. We could not locate neither the Israeli family nor the American family but Israeli there was a family that lived in Israel one of the four families one of the four families immigrated to Israel got you after the war but I was able to locate the Munich family in okay? Germany in Germany and again I do have uh, the name in my memoirs uh, I will have to uh, recoup it I wrote to Yad Vashem and I told them exactly the story that I heard and the fact that there was a family in Munich. Basically you read an article in 1976 about this family, uh, this uh, lady that lived in Yorba Linda yeah. and she gave a speech at the Rotary Club or a Kiwanis Club yeah. over there and then you contacted her, her and then you listened to her story believing it's an authentic story that's how you decided to write to Yad Vashem. Exactly. <coughs> so, I wrote in 76, I wrote in, and I used to go to Israel twice a year, three times a year, uh, in my younger days, and every time I'll go to Israel, I will check with Yad Vashem, with the person in charge of the Department of Righteous Gentiles. Right. I think his name was Paul Thiel, but I'm not sure. Paul Thiel. About TL, I think, but it doesn't matter. And? And he says, no, we're still researching it. We're still researching it. After four years of waiting, waiting and wasting time, and with survivors, you never know. That's right. They might not be here next year. Right. So I went to Munich myself in 1980. I met the fam at my own expense. Yet the same, yet the same should have reimbursed, reimbursed me, but forget it. I just wanted the story to become official, official, and the award rewarded. The the the, the, the title be granted. The title be granted. Right. 
I went to Munich. I found the family. The mother and the father <coughs> were not that old, but they were because of the war, etc., etc. They were very sick. They very, were affected. Very, yeah, very affected by the war. But the baby that was born in the villa, right. in the basement of the villa, he was now uh, 30, 35, 30 uh, something, right? Yeah. 1943, yeah. 1976, 33, 35, yeah. yeah. And he wrote the story for his parents. On his, behalf of his parents. Right. And they signed the document as if they had written it. Well, he knew it from his parents. Of course. Of course. And I took the document to Jerusalem, presented it to Yad Vashem, they did their own investigation, verified that this is authentic family, right. and I was upset with them because there was no reason for that delay. Really? Yeah. Well, they didn't yeah. have the staff, maybe, yeah. and uh, whatever. Yeah. So, so, in the end, in May of 1983, mm -hmm. I flew Irene Dyke from here. From Fullerton, California. From uh, Orange York, Cal Berlin, yeah, uh, where yeah, she lived. From Los Angeles, probably LAX, to, Jeru to Israel. For the ceremony. For the ceremony. My wife and I picked her up at the airport and we drove her to Jerusalem with a glorious, glorious day with uh, uh, officials and of all the other... Uh, there was also a Polish friend of Irene Goodobdijk, a Jew, um, here in Southern California that accompanied us for the ceremony. I gave a nice uh, lunch, uh, sort of like a mini banquet in her honor at the uh, uh, at the faculty club of the Hebrew University, which was uh, like the best uh, the, the best place uh, where we could have a little private room, and we had a glorious time. Now. <laughs> Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cer cei mai ană, dar eu n-am de unde mai coadară. Auzi, dragă fata, nechi dragă, aseară bolivă ta miceană. Și acum nu sparale, să-ți cumpăr sandale, buzunarele sunt goale ta. Mai apoi, dragă, încă o băncuță și băui încă 